All right, bear with me here. I'm, this is just like I'm just throwing out ideas kind of thing. So a little while ago, um, you've been using this thing. It was just a practice cross stitch. I don't know if you can see here. This is um, two two different color threads. I wanted to try to kind of get a military, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know, kind of like a, I don't know, like some kind of a khaki-ish look to it. Anyways, and then I decided to, uh, to cross, cross stitch two things together just to, just to, like I said, I'm just, it was also like to just sit down and cross stitch and think about things while I'm doing stuff. Anyways, I wanted to try this thread that I picked up at the um, dollar store. It's a pastel colored one here. You can see, and it's not made for cross stitch. And actually when I was taking out, well, you can see one strand of a normal cross stitch thread compared to that. So I, at first I was like, boy, that's awfully thick. Um, like I thought, because they come in, like, I don't know what you guys said know about it. I think these are called skeins and this is floss but anyways as you can see it's and then it you know it's it comes out into like six strands and uh, at first I thought holy cow this thing's rather thick for six strands but it's only one I was like whoa so I wanted to try it out like I said it's not made for cross stitch but I wanted to try it out and look anyways it's not this is I think 14 count yeah yeah 14 count uh, uh, 14 count Ida and um you can see how nice and thick it looks like compared to that i mean those are that's two strands and this is what you know would have been six or a little bit more and it's nice and tight anyways i was like oh i don't like using colors very much i usually just stick to this actually um this it's a uh, it's the 934 dmc 934 it's a dark avocado i do believe um it's Absolutely gorgeous. I've got some other stuff, some uh, other thread that I picked up um, from some shakers, actually. Um, it's undyed, but it's uh, it's called uh, Espresso, and it's got an off... It almost looks black, but it's like a faded look to it. Anyways, it's a beautiful antique look to it. I just love that antique look. Anyways, this has got nothing to do with this. It's all got to do with uh, me trying to figure out different different things. Anyways, I was like... Uh, let's I've never cross stitched a hex so I was like you know what let's cross stitch a, a hex just for fun and um I used actually um as a guide a template um a can games five dollar uh, wooden token thing and I, and um I'm glad I did because it, you can actually see at the very tail end is the this bit here is the only bit I did properly and it took me uh because I was actually these are all half stitch actually but um I forgot, like, I was like, no, no, it's been so long since I've half-stitched. And uh, I was like, oh, and it finally kicked in. I was like, okay, this is how you remember how to do it. If I don't know if you can see, but it's b bumpy. Like, it's not so, it's because I did it, like, I went up and down, up, like, in, uh, you know, from uh, top, b uh, bottom. I should always, uh, for half-stitch, you should always, like, stick to one. And that's what I did here. They're all tops, kind of, or aboves or whatever. Anyways, I was like, oh, God, I really like the texture on this puppy. And um, that started getting me thinking about, boy, wouldn't I love making a, um, but it would take way, way, way too long to cross stitch um, a map. And then I was thinking, but it wouldn't take long at all to sew a map. And, um, you know, um, sew, sew all the hexes. And so, trust me, it wouldn't take long at all. Um, especially now with the technology, it's just crazy. Um, and I was thinking, holy cow, maybe I can start thinking about, and like I said, this is all brain, just off in Wonderland, this is what I do uh, all, quite a bit. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was thinking, wait a minute, um, what about uh, making some kind of a portable game? Um, you know, I could start, like, was whatever. And then I went, screw this. Let's start thinking about visually impaired, um, uh, adapting board games um, for, well, I'm going to call it, uh, how about different requirements? Um, I'm not into the, all the, you know, the whatever. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I was starting to think that way. I was like, holy cow, there's a whole untapped whatever. Remember, I'm not into money. I'm not into getting off into business land. I'm just throwing out whatever. So I just love thinking about things. Um, and I was thinking, wait a flipping minute. Um, wouldn't that be fun to contact uh, someone at some point or say, hey, and I mean, just start simple. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> like I wouldn't even do the Tannenberg one. It's because it's too many, because uh, I want to do this. I want to like get off into concept land. I don't know, find like a really tiny, I don't know, even like just a practice um, 
thing, something like four by four hexes or something, and try to figure out, can I make a game? Can I make a, a game that you never, you don't even need to ha have vision? Can I do that? Uh, you know, and start thinking that way. Holy Lord, lifting. Um, yeah, that's about it, really, I think. Um, hmm? Yeah, that's where my brain's at. Well, as well as uh, World War One-ish type stuff. But, uh, ooh, like this. Oh, it's just starting to, you know what I mean? I want to go and talk to um, people that... Uh, you know, have a whole lot harder time seeing than I do, but I was like, and there's a zillion other things to think about, you know, and just because in the end, it's just trying to get the the game out, I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right. Hope you're having a great time. Bye.